hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i will be showing you how to smooth the skin and retouch your pictures to make it more beautiful in photoshop this video tutorial is brought to you by dirty studio and before i start i want to tell you that according to youtube 70% of people that watch my tutorials don't subscribe to this channel so please subscribe and hit the like button so you will be the first to watch my tutorials anytime i upload a new video now why editing your pictures anytime you are editing your pictures the first thing you have to do is to create a new layer or to duplicate the layer below by going to your background layer let me just go to this background layer and right click once i right click i will just select duplicate layer now once you select duplicate layer you will see us and you will see the background name now you are going to choose any background name you like you can choose any name you like but i'll just leave it to background copy and once i click on ok on my keyboard you will see that another layer we create above this background layer now another way to do this once we press ctrl z to go back if you do any mistake just press ctrl z another way to duplicate your background or to create a new background is to go to your background layer here and to create a new layer is to go to your background layer and drag it to this icon that is here just drag it to that box that have something like cross yes something like cross once you drag it there once you click on the background left click and hold then drag it you will create another background copy now the third process to do this is by going to the layer the background layer and click on it then you press ctrl j on your keyboard and this will create a new layer ctrl j will just create a new layer for you now once you are done we want to go to the next step now which is removing the blemishes from the face we want to remove these pimples and the eye bag and other stuff from the face so the skin will look more beautiful and also all these stray hair all these stray hairs to do this you have to use some of your tools in photoshop like you can use the spot healing brush tool you can use the patch tool you can even use your healing brush tool and you can use your clone stand tool if you are using the latest version of photoshop like mine if you just move your cursor to this or you move your mouse to all these places here all these tools you can see some short videos that photoshop will show you on how you can use those tools and how you can master them now for the first tool i'm going to be using i'm going to use the spot healing brush tool so i'll just click on this spot healing brush tool and zoom in my picture and once you click on the spot healing brush tool you have to left click on the blemishes on the pimples once you left click you are going to be cleaning all those pimples from the face just left click but i don't like this too sometimes if we look at our image you can see that the skin is different from the results so you can use another tool which is the healing brush tool and click on those skin that you like and apply it on the places you don't like and as you can see the results now look more better so if we go to this next pimples that i want to remove i will just do it like this and this hair too hold alt on your keyboard once you hold alt you just left click on the good skin hold alt and left click on the good skin and you then left click again on the bad skin and drag it up and just drag it and it will clean all those places so i'm i'm going to be doing it for this area and you can even use another tool here which is this patch tool select the patch tool and left click and cycle around the hair and then left click and hold then you drag it to the good part of the skin so um i'm just going to continue using this patch tool now for other parts of the pictures i'll just use this patch tool select and drag use this patch tool left click hold select and drag and i'm just going to be doing it for these areas and this place and also some of this place and as you can see the results if we go to this before and the after you will see how the picture now look more better you can keep doing it for this place and also this area and once i'm done with that part i will come here too and also remove the pimples from this area and also this part 
and one good thing one good use of this patch too is if you use this other spot healing brush too and do it on this part of the picture the result is not going to be nice and as you can see the result is not nice and if i just press ctrl z on my keyboard ctrl z to go back and i use this patch to this our patch to and drag this place here and then drag it to another more better place you can see that the results look more real and if i come down here i will also drag it here and some of these areas of the pictures and i think i'm done with this her forehead but there are some parts that i still need to touch like these areas and i still need to touch this place and also this part now i will have to move to her cheeks and also do it on this part of her cheeks so it's going to look nice but i'm not going to be very perfect because this is a tutorial video and so because of time i will not be very perfect while doing it but you will still understand and you will still learn many things in this video so i'm just going to come here and drag it now come here also and drag it i'm done removing the pimples from her face now the next thing i want to do is to remove this eye bag we want to remove this eye below her eyes this thing that look like fat something fat skin below her eyes we want to remove this thing from the picture because if you look at one of my edited picture on instagram if you look at this same edited picture on instagram you will see that i removed this place below her eyes and the result was very nice and some people don't like it and some people like it because if you are editing for a customer some customer might not want you to remove this thing because it will make them look different but our advice if you are editing picture you should remove the eye bag is very important most people will want you to remove it so to remove it i'm just going to use my patch tool and drag around this line once i use my patch tool to drag around this line i will just use i will just left click once i left click i will drag it down and as you can see the result is magic let me do it again so you understand use your patch tool to draw around the line once you draw around the line left click and hold drag it down to the good area and as you can see the result is going to change and the picture now look more better you can still use your patch tool to adjust it and to make it look more nice you can also use your clone stamp tool to do this but i will i will use the clone stamp tool in the other eyes and once i'm done let me use the clone stamp tool here i'll just select my clone stamp tool reduce the size of the clone stamp tool hold alt on your keyboard alt on your keyboard then you left click on the good part once you left click on the good part leave alt don't hold alt again then you left click again and you start applying this good part on the on the other part that you want to remove so this is one of the good use of this clone stamp tool you can also reduce your opacity and just left click again once you left click and hold out you pick the good side then you paint the bad side so now i'm just going to continue with this part and this area but it still doesn't look nice let me just use my patch to to adjust it let's use our patch to, to just adjust to this area and i think i'm done with the eyes but let me use this clone stamp tool again to still make this place look more better so i'll just use my clone stamp tool to make their look more nice now let's look at the before and the after this is the before and this is the after but i'm not done with other parts like the frequency separation now since we are done with removing the blemishes and removing the hair the stray hairs and the eye bag from the image we want to do another thing again another most important thing while editing your picture is we want to smooth the skin yes you have to smooth your skin while editing your pictures even if some people will not want you to smooth the skin of their pictures but it's very important and to smooth the skin you have to use your frequency separation or you have to use your skin smoothing process anyone you like so for me i'm going to use my frequency separation 
process to smooth the skin and you can also create your frequency separation or if you have the action you can just go to actions and select your frequency separation but i'm going to show you how to create it instead of going to actions and selecting frequency separation but in case you don't want to go through the long process you can as well visit www.dirtystudio.com and you move to our shop menu you will see our list of actions magic retouching pack once you just purchase the actions you just pay for the actions and once you pay for it you unzip it and with your raw extractor you have to just extract the file and once you extract it you watch the tutorial videos on how to install those actions and once you install the actions you have this list of all my actions here and you can just go to frequency separation to play the frequency separation action but i'm not going to be using the action here because some people might want to know how to do those frequency separation action so now to do the frequency separation action i want to just merge these two layers together we can as well merge it or we cannot merge it anyone you like i will just have to merge these two layers together and press ctrl e now to create your frequency separation process the first thing you have to do is to go to your background layer once you go to your background layer you right click and duplicate the layer once you have duplicated it you have to change this duplicate layers name i'll be renaming it to low frequency color so i'm just going to use my keyboard now to type low frequency color once i'm done i'm just going to click okay and now we have rename it low frequency color the next thing you have to do is to go to your gaussian blur go to filter and select blur then go to gaussian blur we are going to be changing the radius of our gaussian blur to five once you have selected five you have to go to and click ok and you will see that your picture will look kind of blur now let me show you one thing about this picture is that while doing this process the process can be different for many pictures in my previous tutorials some people do complain that once they are through with this frequency separation process and they apply it on their picture some of their pictures will look dark and i'll be explaining it for you in this video if you don't want the effect to be too much on your picture you have to either reduce the gaussian blur or increase the gaussian blur depending on how you do it increasing or reducing the gaussian blur will affect your picture so you have to make sure that you just try different radius of gaussian blur to see the best for that particular image you are editing most image for example smartphone camera pictures the result will be different from digital camera pictures like this picture i'm editing so now i'm just going to go to this next process of going to the background layer again and right click once i right click i will just duplicate the layer i'm going to be renaming this layer to high frequency layer once i'm through renaming it to high frequency layer i'm just going to click ok and once i've clicked ok i will go to this high frequency layer and drag it above the low frequency color let me press ctrl z again to show you what i just did i went to this high frequency layer to drag it above the low frequency color layer and once you drag it above the low frequency color layer you will see that your picture is no more blur this is the before and this is the after your picture is no more blur meaning this high frequency layer is above this our blood low frequency color layer now the next thing you have to do is to click on this high frequency layer and go to image and select apply image and once you select apply image you will see that your picture will change depending on the settings of this apply image since the result is different we want to do a little bit of settings on this apply image to make sure that what we want is showing on our picture now sometimes if you open this apply image you will see that your picture will become gray but i'll be showing you how you can do it here just go to your layer make sure it's at low frequency layer I mean the low frequency color now you make sure the channel is at rogb your blending mode you make sure your blending mode is at is at subtract once you select subtract for your blending mode you make sure your scale is two and your offset is at one two eight now watch these settings again before you click on this okay don't click on this invert make sure the invert is turned off and you can see all my settings opacity is at 100 scale 2 offset must be 1 to 8 it must be 1 to 8 layer must be low frequency color channel rgb and the rest and then you click ok once you click ok you can see the results of our photoshop the result of the image now looks gray 
but we don't want it to look like this. We want to continue our process of doing this frequency separation process. Once we are done, we want to change the blending mode now. We want to choose a new blending mode. Now, just head to this your blending mode here. You can either choose two type of blending mode. You can choose vivid light or you can choose linear light. So vivid light, if you use vivid light, you see that the results will not be very nice, but most people use vivid light. But we advise that you should use linear light. Now, once you have used your linear light, you just head to your low frequency color layer and you right click and you select convert to smart object. And once you are done with the convert to smart object, head to filter, blur, and select your Gaussian blur. Now, once you select this Gaussian blur, you will see this result. I'm just going to change the radius to 48. And as you can see, the result of our picture has changed. And I can also choose 50. Now, another thing with this Gaussian blur is that the percentage of Gaussian blur will determine how the results of, of your picture will look like. If you use a Gaussian blur of 115, that will make some parts of your image to look dark. And that's why some people do complain that you see some of their parts of their image is black, is dark. So it's because of the picture and the Gaussian blur radius you use. Smartphone pictures is very advisable to use low Gaussian blur radius. You see digital camera pictures that have higher quality, you can use higher Gaussian blur radius. So for me, I'm just going to leave this Gaussian blur radius to around 49. I think 49 looks good for my Gaussian blur reduce. And once I'm done, I'm just going to click OK. Now, once you click OK, you see that Smart Filter layer and Gaussian blur layer has been created. Just head to this Smart Filter layer and hold Control I on your keyboard and it's going to invert it. You see, let's go back again. So I will show you what I did. Go to your Smart Filter layer. Press Ctrl I on your keyboard and it's going to invert it. Now our picture now look normal. Our picture now look the way it was before. In some type of computer, you might see Command I. One in some, you might see Ctrl I. So I am using Windows. Just hold Ctrl I on your keyboard to invert it, or you can press Command I on your keyboard to invert it. Now, once we are done, you have to go to your brush. Once you select your brush, we want to start applying this frequency separation effect on our image. Now, let's see the result. I hope this result will be very nice. And as you can see it, let's zoom in the picture. Once I'm applying it, it's going to be making our picture to look more nice. And as you can see the results. And now let me show you the kind of complaint people always complain. Let's double click on this Gaussian Blur Reduce layer and you will see something. If I increase this Gaussian Blur Reduce, you can see the result is becoming more black. This is the kind of complaint that people always complain that, oh, it's very dark in their picture. It's making the picture to look more distant. So this Gaussian Blur Reduce will determine the effect on your picture. If we load this Gaussian Blur Reduce, you will see that the effect has low on our picture. But for us, this 48, this 49 look more better for us. So I'm just going to continue applying it. Another thing you should look or you should focus on is this two box. Yeah, I always talk about this thing, the foreground and the background color. You might just click on your brush and this upper foreground color is black and the one below the background color is white. If you do it, you are automatically removing the effect from your image. So make sure that this one above, this our set foreground color is white and the set background color is black. And once you are done, you continue applying this frequency separation on your picture and you can see the results look very nice. So I'm just going to continue applying it on these areas and on some parts of this part of the picture. And I'm also going to come here. Don't forget to reduce the flow of your brush. Don't forget to reduce the flow of your brush is very important. So I'll just come here to apply it here. And another thing again, you should focus on this line of your image the line of this part and some other parts. You shouldn't apply this frequency separation on those parts of the image so you will not spoil the picture. So I'm just going to come here to apply it on this place to remove it also. And if I'm pressing X on my keyboard, X, 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 it's going to be changing this our foreground and the background color. So that is a shortcut. Instead of going to this arrows here and be clicking it to change it and coming back here, you click it, change. you're pressing X on your keyboard and it's going to be changing it for you. 
and it's going to be making it easy for you to remove or apply those filters on your image. So I'm just going to come to this neck and also apply it on this neck. If you normally watch some of my old tutorial, you are going to see that I always do this frequency separation effect twice on my picture because of some parts of the edges. I always do it twice on my picture. So I'm going to do it twice again on this video. But since I already have the action here, there's no need to do it again. So I can just come to this action to do it and do it very quick without wasting your time again. I'm done with this first part of the frequency separation. Now what I'm going to do now is that I'm just going to come here to this place and highlight everything together. Let me just merge everything together. I'll use my high frequency separation layer and the background layer. And once I highlight everything, I'm just going to press Ctrl E to merge everything together. So I'm just going to come to this frequency separation action now. Remember, it's still the same process of what we did before. The Gaussian blur, the apply image, the converse smart objects, it's still everything we did. So in case you are confused about action, you can watch my previous video that I just uploaded before this one on how to install actions in Photoshop where I explain the use of actions and how you can install actions and download it. So this frequency separation action is shortcut to doing those long process. So once I just click on the frequency separation action and play it, it's going to do everything very quickly without us wasting our time to be doing everything from beginning and without wasting your own time. So now why I do this process again is because of these edges. Is because of these edges because of our Gaussian blur effect was affecting these edges is making it to be black so what you can do here is that you increase your flow go to your Gaussian blur reduce your Gaussian blur and once you reduce it let's look at how the effect will look on the edges now look at the effect on the edges so if we increase this Gaussian blur you will see that the edges will become very black you see that's one thing about this frequency separation process so I'm going to cancel it and I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and increase the flow. Once I increase the flow, I'm going to clean this filter from the hair so our picture will not look bad. Once I clean it from the hair, I'm just going to apply it here. And I'm also going to clean it here and apply it here. So let's just come here again to remove it from this place. And let's come to this below this place. You can see it's still black. So let me just come to this Gaussian blur to reduce the size of our Gaussian blur reduce. Once I reduce the size, I'm just going to apply it here and remove it from this place. Let's come here again to apply it and remove it from up here. And also this place, I also apply it on this place, remove it from here. And our image now look more smooth and more nice. Before you can see many pimples and blemishes, but now it now looks more fresh and it's looking more good. There's a mistake I did in the beginning. I was busy merging all the layers together because I love to merge my layers together while editing. I hate too much layers here. That's why we cannot see the before and the after because I already merged those layers. So what I'm going to do now, because I'm through the frequency separation process, let me just do one small editing here. And because my Photoshop don't have the before, the unedited image again, because I match everything together, I'm just going to do some kind of things on this image now. In a situation like this, when you don't have the unedited picture again on your layers because of the mistake I make from the beginning, you can use two tricks to bring it back. You can go to your history. Once you go to your history, you just drag your history up and go to this last place. Once you go to this, main jpeg now to open your history you have to just go to your windows and select history once you go to your windows and select history it's going to open now you drag it up and move to this first image name just click on the image name you will see the unedited picture now right click select new document once you select new document go back to this place go back to this place don't make a mistake of doing any other editing here because once you do any other editing without going back to this last place here you will lose all your work you will lose all your editing so don't make that kind of mistake once you go back you head to this your new document picture select this your move to drag it into the edited image once you drag it into the edited image you are going to see that this our unedited image will be above the edited image the next thing you have to do in this kind of case 
is that you have to drag the unedited image below this place let's just do some kind of editing here and i'm just going to drag this unedited layer below this edited layer so look at the before and the after now we have the unedited one below the edited one another process you can do again is to go to your folder once you open your folder you will see your unedited picture you just drag it into your photoshop on top the edited image and if you drag it on top you hit enter and it's going to change look at the look at the picture here and it's going to now look nice let's just delete it and the reason I drag this unedited picture into my edited picture is because I lost the unedited layer and now I need it again to do other parts of this image like to adjust some parts of this image that if you think that this high frequency separation and the rest is, is too much you can just click on this your layer max once you click on the layer max select your brush then you want to adjust some of this editing on the picture we want to clean some editing of the picture you can also clean some editing or you can leave it but for me i like to do this thing because there's some kind of editing i want to clean from the eyes you see the before and the after i've cleaned it from the eyes i want to clean this frequency separation from these parts and from the lips some parts of the lips it also affects some parts of the lips and we now look more good you can also adjust some parts if you think it's too much you can reduce the flow you can reduce the flow and just adjust it but i think it is looking more good and let's just adjust it a little on this part and i think it now looks more better now we want to do the next step what's the next step dodge and burn we want to dodge and burn our pictures we, you can also let's just make this our unedited picture to look like our layer you no know, i think let's make this unedited picture to look like our layer and now it now looks more better now for the dodge and burn let's go to these actions you are going to see dodge and burn actions now you can also do the dodge and burn actions yourself or you can go to actions and select dodge and burn but i'm going to be doing the dodge and burn in full in this tutorials i will not be using any shortcuts so because some people might not know how to do all those processes in the past but i would advise you to watch my previous videos if you want to learn how to do this dodge and burn very well now to do our dodge and burn i'm just going to go to this upper layer here high frequency separation details once I go to the layer, I will press Ctrl Z, Ctrl J on my keyboard. Once I press Ctrl J on my keyboard, it's going to duplicate this layer. And once I'm done, I'm just going to go to this, our create new adjustment layer. Once I click on it, I'll go to curves. And once I click on the curves, I'm just going to hit on the curves again and press Ctrl J. What it's going to do now is going to create two curves. So I will rename these curves above to dodge and i will hit enter and i'll rename the curve below to burn and i'll hit enter now what is the use of dodge to increase the brightness of the lighter areas and the use of burn to make the darker areas to be more dark you have to burn the darker areas and dodge the lighter areas so for this dodge i'll just click on this dodge this other box here this other line line box you have to click on it double click on it now you are going to open the dodge you have to increase the brightness you can see the result just increase the brightness a little drag it up a little come to this layer max here this layer max press ctrl i on your keyboard ctrl or command i on your keyboard and you are going to remove the effect what this do is that it's going to create a negative black layer max to hide those effects now for the effect to show again you have to use your brush to show the effect on your image for example if i select this brush and click on the image you can see that the result is going to be showing again now you have to go to your bone double click on this area once you have opened the properties for the bone you just have to low it down we want to make it more darker and i think it now looks more good like this so i'm just going to click on these two arrows here go to the layer max press ctrl i to invert it now what we are going to do is that we are going to increase the lighter area of the pictures and make the darker area of the pictures to look more dark we want to dodge and burn the image so i'm just going to click on this bone once i click on the bone i'll select my brush i will reduce the size of the brush 
make the flow to be around 2 your flow must be around 2 and your opacity should be 100 once we are done you are going to see this is our edited layer we want to turn off the edited layer first i want to merge these two layers together i'm going to turn off this our edited layer once i turn it off the reason i'm turning it off is that so we are going to see the dodged and burn layer we are going to see the darker and the lighter area of our picture now some people do use black and white effect to get more results to see all these things but i don't use those black and white filter to know where i'm supposed to dodge and where i'm supposed to burn i used to turn off this edited layer once you turn off the edited layer the unedited layer is showing everything and as you can see once we apply this high frequency once we apply the frequency separation on our image it's going to destroy those lighter and darker area of the picture it's going to make it look flat so because we are not seeing them we want to turn it off now once you turn it off let's click on this bone select our brush and now let's start applying it and as you can see i'm applying it on the picture so if i turn it on again before and the after before and the after and, and as you can see the result is very nice on our image so i'm going to turn it off again i'm going to turn off this our edited layer again and adjust this place what i'm going to do now is i'm going to come here increase the size i'm just going to burn these areas i will burn this part too and also burn this part for the dodge i'm just going to increase the size and kind of lighten these areas here let's look at the before and the after before and the after they look more good but i want to blend it let's turn it off again what am i going to do is i'm going to come here to dodge this area let's dodge here and see what we are doing again i'm just going to come to this area no need to burn or dodge here now for the eye brown we want to burn it increase the size of the brush or reduce it i'm just going to apply this bone to make this eye brown to look more darker i will come here too to make it to look more darker but it can be very dark for some of you once you do it on your image so what you have to do is to adjust it again make sure your foreground and your background color if you make sure the foreground color is black reduce the flow come and apply it here again to we'll kind of remove it on the image now the image now look perfect for us so i'm done with the first process which is the frequency separation. no the first process which is the removing the blemishes from the face i'm done with the second process which is applying our frequency separation on the face to make the picture look more smooth and more nice and, and now i'm done with the third process of applying the dodge and bone so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to come to this dodge and bone layer i'm going to highlight these two layers together right click and group it or you can just group layers or you can just press ctrl g on your keyboard to group the layers now the next thing we want to do in our picture is that we want to apply camera raw filter go to your filter once you go to your filter you select camera raw filter and once you click on the camera raw filter your camera raw filter is going to open or you can do the second process which is the more faster way of doing it just press ctrl shift a hold ctrl or command shift a ctrl plus shift plus a on your keyboard and it's going to open the camera raw filter now why do i want to use this camera raw filter i want to use this camera raw filter because you can use it to do many things on your image many things in one section of photoshop you can even use this camera raw filter to even smoothen your image so you can use it to do any kind of things on your image as in the whole photoshop tool most of the whole photoshop tool are in this our camera raw filter so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to increase the contrast i'm going to increase the clarity the texture the details and many other things with the camera of it so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to this our contrast increase the contrast to 20. once i increase the contrast to 20 i'm just going to come to this next clarity and increase the clarity to 20 and let's just press 20 for the clarity now i'm just going to go to this texture increase the texture to 10 once you increase the texture to 10 you can see the results the texture will bring out the skin texture of your image you can even increase it to 100 let's see the image now look at the effect of the 100 you can see that those textures the little little details on our face have increased so if you reduce it those textures will reduce it will become more kind of smooth 
you see you have reduced the texture of your image and i'm just going to leave it to be around 10 for our skin texture because i love when my image has nice textures so i'm just going to leave the skin texture to look 10 so the image is kind of going to look more or i can leave it to be around 5. now for the vibrance i'm just going to increase my vibrance to be around 30 and the vibrance is very good too it's going to make your colors to look more nice without spoiling the image and the saturation i don't like to increase my saturation sometimes because the result is kind of harsh so i prefer the vibrance instead of the saturation now once i'm done with this area i'm going to go to the temperature to reduce the temperature now you can increase your temperature or reduce the temperature just like in normal temperature like if you make it like this it will look more hot as if the sun is too much and if you reduce it it will look more cold as if the temperature look more nice blue sky and i'm just going to leave the temperature to be around minus five yes i think minus five is better for the tints you can increase the purple or reduce the purple depending on the one you like and i think i don't need to do anything on the tint i'm just going to increase the shadows to 11 and the exposure i can also increase this exposure to be around 0 0.10 and for the contrast again i want to adjust it to be around 25 i think 25 look more nice now for the next thing you have to go to you see your curves you can increase or reduce it you can see your details to so sharpen or reduce the noise now sometimes if you snap an image you see many noise on the picture noises are those unwanted like you will see the effect on your picture there sometimes if you zoom in your picture and you use too much iso on your camera or you snap a, a picture at night and you, and the light is not enough you are going to see that once you zoom it you will see many kind of fine line on your image that will make it no, not to look clear so if you want to remove all those things you have to use your noise reduction tool to kind of remove those noise from your image and if your image is not well sharpened and you want to sharpen it you can use your sharpening tool to let's increase the sharpen and you can see our image kind of look more sharpen and I think I don't need to do any sharpening here. Let's go to the color grading. And I love to use this color grading. My Almost all my settings for all my image are kind of the same. Let's just click on this big tools here. Let's click on this first one. This is the shadows. The shadows, I like to make my shadows to be kind of red or, or orange. But I, I like this to be around here. Now, watch what I'm doing. I'm going to click on this round small cycle left click and drag you can use any kind of color you like you can move your mouse to any kind of color you like this color grading is more good because you'll be able to color grade your shadows your highlights and the mid tones so i'm just going to move these shadows to be around here and i'm going to come to the mid tone the mid tone too i'm just going to move it to the same kind of areas i'm just going to go to this our highlights make our highlight to be blue i like my highlights to look kind of blue now i'm just going to go to this effect you can increase or reduce this place this v i n t e t t i n g you can increase or reduce it depending on how you like but i'm not going to do anything on this place i'm just going to and i think i'm done let's reduce this temperature again to see the effect and let's go back to these effects and i'm not supposed to to even use this effects place i'm just going to leave it to zero and now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to click on ok there's another thing you need to do in your image which is the teeth and eyes whitening because sometimes once you shoot a kind of picture and the lighting if the lighting is very blue or very red it will affect those lighter parts of the image like your eyes and the teeth so we want to whiten this teeth and the eyes we can also use our teeth whitening action here that you can get from www.dirtystudio.com this is our teeth whitening and i play it now once i play it i go to this teeth whitening select our brush make sure your flow is at 100 now we are going to reduce the size of our brush and start cleaning out those things on our image if you make mistake you make sure you correct those mistakes by making sure your foreground color is white and your background color is black i have explained these things many times so if you are if you are still confused about it just know that once this box above is white and the one below is black you are applying the filter or the effect on your image 
Once the one above is black and the one below is white, you are removing this effect from your image. You can do this again by pressing X on your keyboard. So I'm just going to continue removing it from these areas and make here to look more whiter and the teeth now look nice. So I'll just come back here too and to apply it on these areas and also apply it on this place. And I'm, al and I'm almost done with the teeth. And I'll also apply it on this part of the teeth. Let's just apply it on this part of the teeth. And I also come here and apply it on this part of the teeth and these areas. If you make mistake, you make sure you clean those mistakes from your image. Our image now look more good. Let's zoom out. Let's look at the before and the after. Now let's move to the eye. We are going to move to the eye now. So let's just apply it on this eye. And once I'm done with this place, I'm just going to move to this next part which is this area and move to the next eye we are almost done now for the next thing you have to do for this next thing we have to do now is this next thing is not important but i just love the skin tune for the retouching academy because i don't used to waste my time to do the skin tune process but in the future i will do a special skin tune tutorial for you to know how to create a very nice skin tune for your image but if you have this retouching academy for your image for your photoshop just go to windows extension and select beauty retouch version 3.3 and allow it to open so in case your photoshop don't have it you have to install it it doesn't come with photoshop and you can buy it from their website or you can ask a friend to give you the file to install for you or there are also ways that you can also download it from the internet for free and you can also ask a friend for it so what i'm just going to do is that i'm just going to use my quick selection to select this plus quick selection to plus i will increase the size of my quick selection to once i increase the size i'm just going to select only the face let's come here and select only the face i'm not going to select the hair and once i'm done i'm just going to go to this place magical skin tune and click on it once you have clicked on it it's going to automatically do the process for you now what this is going to do is that it's going to select that our face so just come to this shadow left click on the shadow watch what i'm going to do i'm going to hold alt on my keyboard alt drag it up into the skin tone correction layer max and once we drag it up our image is going to change so now what you are going to do is that you will zoom in your image go to this skin tone correction layer select your brush once we have selected the brush we want to remove this our skin tone correction on this our lips we want to remove it from the lips so you make sure your foreground color is black and your background color is white then you apply it to remove those effects and as you can see the former effect on the lips is now showing so we are removing it from our image we have removed it from this part of our image now you can come to this eye too to remove it from the eye you can just come here to remove this effect from the eye you must remove it from this part that you don't like so i'm just going to remove it from the eye and we are done now let's look let's match all our layers together to see the results of this our tutorial and this our editing today let's zoom in this is the before and this is the after so if i zoom out again before and the after and as you can see our image now look more nice and more beautiful and we are done with this tutorial thank you for watching if this video was very helpful to you subscribe for more videos Turn on notifications so YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video and leave a like and comment to help the channel out.